Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Broin's Farm. Today we have a ton going on. Right now we have Sammy and Steph in the high tunnel working on tying up the tomatoes for the second time. Graham Huffman is out here outside the greenhouse potting tomatoes, which is these right here in the four and a half inch pots. And then once they get a lot bigger, we'll stake them up and sell them just at our markets. Mom is working on soaking our plugs, which actually I think she just finished up. That's these little saucers right here. And we soak these for a couple of minutes. I don't know exactly know how long, I'll ask her here. But these will then soak up the water and they'll about triple in size. And that's when she'll bring them in the greenhouse here. And this is what they look like. You can see how much bigger and fatter it is. And it's nice and squishy and soft, which is what we want. Now she has to go through with her fingers and make a little hole so we can drop the seeds in there. We do this for our field because these are held together a lot better than these 32 cell trays that we just sell for retail sales. If you're only gonna plant one or two of these in your garden, that's just fine. But when we're going through the field at a pretty high rate of speed and squishing that in there as hard as we can, we don't want it to break apart as easy as what this would. So we plant them in here. It seems like a fun job, but after you do about 10 of them, it's not so fun anymore. The only thing we have to be careful of is that when opening them, we don't split them in half. Sometimes it happens a little bit, but we don't want to do it any more than we have to. Once the plant starts to grow and it establishes roots, it kind of holds it together better then, and it's not such a big deal. So here's Sammy and Steph. How many rows you get done? Two? Three. Three? Yeah. You're, so I'm she's just, just finishing up the third row. If you've seen my previous video, you'll know how much bigger they got since the last time that we strung these. Some of them are a little bit smaller than others, so the string isn't doing as much, but it won't be long. They'll grow into it. We have to time now because if we don't, what will happen is, you can see how big it is, and it's going to either lay over or it'll kink the stem, which would be really bad, and it could either kill it or severely injure it. And so right now is actually perfect time. They're still pretty easy tying. We can do it pretty fast because there's not a lot of foliage on them yet, but once they get fuller and thicker, then we have to really be careful so that we don't break any of the limbs. How it works is she'll start on one side of the pole, which in this case it's the right side, go on the right side of the first plant, then cross over to the left side of the plant, then she'll come off the left side of the next pole and end up on the right and just keep doing that back and forth till she gets to the end. Then she'll come back up the same row, but instead she'll be on the other side and making basically an X to hold the plants in there. Well, we gotta open those sides more. It's too, they're too low. We didn't want to open them too high though because the wind, but now that we got them tied, they'll be okay. They'll be just dandy. This is a little guy, he's not gonna go in. Hmm. Sammy, look at me. And so dad, Pat Broyan, and myself, are now heading to the field. We're gonna start planting potatoes. We just got these cut yesterday. Dad's hooked up to the planter. We already have the fertilizer up in the field, which you can't see. I'm gonna hook up to the potatoes right now with this tractor.
Hello. <laughs> so we got done with the red. Now we're working on the white potatoes. Actually, almost done with them. Then last will be the Norwest, and that's the yellow potato right there. And here's our fertilizer. Comes through the auger. And then, obviously, into our hoppers. Right here, we have two, it's a two row planter. So potatoes come out of each one. And then it gets covered no, by a hill of dirt yeah. caused by these two discs. And this is what the field looks like so far. Obviously not really much to look at. You can see all of our rows. For the first year that I can remember, we're actually gonna have a drive road, which will be really nice. And then you can see the tire tracks. And then between these tire tracks is a row here and a row right here. When we're finishing off a row, we obviously can't cover that last little bit. So like these two rows aren't covered, but then these two are, cause that's where we started. And then that's a drive. And then there's these two. And then these ones again, aren't covered. These two are, and then again, these aren't. So we'll just have either myself or my dad or Sammy or Frank come back through with a rake, just cover these ends up, not only at this end, but the other end out there. That way we have beautiful potatoes all the way out to the end of the field. Sometimes, whoa, that's good. Our fertilizer hoppers pop out of gear. I gotta pop them back in. Can you go just a hair yet? Whoa. Down here at the greenhouse, Sammy and Steph are working on our field vine crops. Specifically, I think the cantaloupe and watermelon. So as you've seen earlier, mom went through and opened a lot of them up. That's what Sammy's doing now again. 
and the stuff's going through with the seeds and dropping them in. You gotta be really careful when planting the seeds because we don't want them all on a pile. We like to try and have them have a little bit of space that way they have the best chance of growing because like I said, it's very important for them to all come up. Sammy's writing out some tags for whatever they're doing. And then after they get the seeds in there, they'll come inside the seed room and they'll get covered with vermiculite, just like all my other seedlings do for the greenhouse. And that's what the finished product looks like. It's very windy, but we just finished. Again, you can't really see that much, but you can see the tire tracks going out through and that looks pretty nice. One thing I wanted to explain in my last video that I didn't was that when we plant these potatoes, the whole goal is that each single slice that we've cut needs to have a sprout on there to grow. If it doesn't have a sprout, it's not gonna grow. But luckily, potatoes have multiple sprouts going around the whole surface of the potato. So even if you cut it in four or sometimes even five different slices, depending on how big the potato is, it's still gonna grow. This one right here that I'm holding doesn't appear to have a sprout, but if you look closely right there is where it's at. And so that is gonna do just fine. Not that I'm gonna put that back in the field, I'm probably just gonna throw it away. But just for example, that's what it should look like. And the reason we took them off when we were cutting was because they just get caught up and not only in the cutter, but then also in our machine when we're planting. So we wanted to take them off. Now they'll start fresh and have a whole new beginning. You probably seen as we were planting, the potatoes were dropping down, the fertilizer was dropping with it. And then after both of those were laid, we have a spray that comes over top of them. And that's to keep any bugs from attacking that potato and killing it before it even starts to grow. Just like our potato cutter, that potato planter is pretty old. Still works pretty good. The only problem is the fertilizer keeps, you know, popping out of gear. But you know, we deal with it. It's only for a couple hours, one day a year. So not that big of a deal. But that tank did not come with it. That's something that we've added on and it's been a huge help ever since. And so that's what I'm gonna call it a wrap for this video. As always, thank you guys for watching and always remember it ain't much, but it's honest work.